Good evening and welcome to chapter 8, uh, markups and markdowns. Tonight we're going to look at break-even analysis, perishables, and calculating cost uh, versus price when we're looking at markup and markdowns. So before we get started in your reading, uh, you should be paying attention to the vocab, uh, some of the words that are coming up that you need to know and you'll be quizzed on either uh, basically in the exam is your break-even point, so your net profit, your contribution margin, your fixed costs, your variable costs, your dollar markup and markdown, uh, your margin or your gross profit, as well as the percent markup on cost versus your percent markup on selling price, as well as what are perishable items. So that's the vocab that you'll need to know um, and you should know it because you're doing the reading. Uh, but let's hop into the material. There's four main topics we're going to cover. Cost, which is the first one we're going to look up, which is your markup based on cost. And this is what manufacturers look at because they know what it costs them produ per to produce different products. And so we have our um, portion based rate that we used in a couple chapters ago. And we're going to bring it back and we're going to use it in the, f the coming chapters as well. But we know that selling price is equal to cost plus markup. So this formula will, will follow us through the rest of this chapter. So it's important to know that selling price is equal to markup plus cost. That's going to be true for when we're looking at selling price or if we're looking at markups for um, based on cost. So when I look at my based on cost portion-based rate circle, we see that my cost is going to be the, my base because it's 100%. That's what, when it says based on cost, that means my cost is 100%. So my rate is going to be my percent markup on cost, and then my portion can be one of two things. It could either be my dollar markup, or it could be my selling price. It's going to be my top portion. So if I want to cover up my cost, I see that my dollar markup is markup divided by percent on cost. So that's what this formula is. So we will use these throughout this chapter. So I hope you learned them. If not, we'll make sure you know them now. So we're going to do the extra practice quiz because I believe the answers are given to you on the regular practice quiz in the back of your book. So I drew my circle and I have my, my selling price or my dollar markup over my cost times my percent markup. And number one says, I rain bought a desk for $800, and I'm going to grab my book, from a supply house. She plans on selling it for $1,200. What is Irene's dollar markup? So I have my formula, and I know uh, my selling price is equal to my cost plus my markup. And I know my cost is 100% here. So if I, I put this into the formula, I see that it cost me $800 and the selling price is $1,200, what is my markup? Well, I have to get markup by itself, so I bring $800 over, and I get a markup of $400. Okay, so that's my dollar markup is $400. Now, what is the percent markup on cost? Well, if I cover up cost, I have my markup divided by my percent markup. Well, do we know percent? That's what we want to calculate. So my markup is $400, and my cost, I was told, is $800. So $400 divided by $800, well, my zeros cancel out. I got 4 divided by 8, which is 0.5, also known as 50%. So Irene has a 50% markup on cost for that first problem. Now it says the second problem is... Suki bought dolls for $14 each. That's what the cost is. To make up her profit that she desires, she has to mark up each doll 38% on cost. Okay, so it asks us to find the dollar markup as well as the selling price. So I use my formula. My selling price equals my cost, which is $14, plus my markup. And we're informed that 38% of my cost plus my 14. So I've got to multiply these to two together. So when I do that, I get $5.32. So my selling price is $14 plus $5.32. So my selling price is 
and my markup is five dollars and thirty two cents so the last question we have in this extra practice area is number three I'm just going to stay down here so I can write. Uh, it says J sells calculators. His competitor sells a new line at $16. So he's got to sell his with the markup cost to be less than $16. So his selling price has got to be $16. Okay. J needs 42% markup on his cost. So that's what this is. So we're going to have our, our sales selling price equals cost plus markup. So we know we don't know cost, but we know selling price. We know markup, but we don't know the markup of how much. So let's add these together. So that's 1.42 times our cost, which we don't know, equals 16. Well, let's get rid of that. So we divide that by 142. 16 divided by 142 equals uh, $11.21. Well, we got to figure out what kind of markup he had because if he's selling it for $16, so we got to minus our 16 from it, and we get $4.73. So that's how we work markup problems based on cost. What do we do if it's based on selling price? Let's look. We're going to use the same base rate portion. Circle to help us figure it out. But this time our selling price is going to be 100%. And so what changes in our circle is instead of cost here, it's going to be sell, uh, selling price. Instead of price selling price up here, it's going to be cost or our dollar markup. And then the difference in our rate is one minus a percent of the uh, markup. So let us look at unit. Uh, basically unit two of this chapter and I'm going to look at actually the first practice problem of unit two's practice quiz and it says Irene now bought a desk for $400 from an office supply and plans to sell it for 600 bucks so what is the dollar markup well we did last time that we learned that if we use a formula of selling price is equal to cost plus markup we realize that the markup is $200 now it says, what is the percent markup on selling price? Well, if I want to find the percent markup on selling price, what do I have to do? I cover up this, and I see that it's my markup, which is $200, divided by my selling price, which is $600. So I get 200 divided by 600 equals 33.33 with a remainder. So my markup is 200 bucks, and my percent is 33.33. Let's do number two with Suki. Suki buys dolls, and this is now in the extra practice problem, which is on 215. Suki buys dolls for $14 each, and she desires to make a profit of 38%. What is the selling price of each doll? And then, what is the dollar markup? Check your answer. Okay, let's figure this out. So, we have our formula, and we know that selling price is equal to cost plus markup. And so what we're going to do is we're going to see that um, I've got to, we've got to figure out the selling price. We know what our cost is at $14. We know our markup is 38% of whatever our selling price is. And so, we got to get bring this over to figure out what our selling price is. So 38S minus 30.38S. So these wipe out. This leaves us, so 1S minus 0.38 leaves us 0.62S equals 14. So S divided by 62.62. So 14 divided by 0.62 equals, what is that? Type it into the calculator real quick. It says 14 divided by 0.62 is 2258. So that is our selling price per doll. So 
$22.58. So what's our markup? Well, it cost us 14, so minus 14, 8.58 is our markup. So that is 38% of what she bought it for. Let's do one more. Let's do number four of the extra practice quiz. Dan Flo sells wrenches for $12. That cost $7. What is Dan's percent markup at cost? And then what is Dan's percent markup at selling price? So they want us to implement both base rate portion circles. So if I write my cost base rate circle, I see that I want to find out my percent, so I'm going to cover up this one. So my markup divided by my cost. Well, what's the difference here? So my markup is equal to $5, because the difference between 12 and 7 is 5. So 5 divided by 7 is equal to 71, about 71.4. So then i got to figure out my percent markup at my selling price. So I do my same thing and i got my markup divided by my selling price. Well that's going to be my markup is still 5 bucks divided by 12. So 5 twelfths is equal to 41.7. So those are two of Dan's different prices. So before we go on to unit three of this chapter, I want to pause um, and create a new film. So thanks for turning in, tuning in to the first half of chapter eight.